Are you ready to go off the grid? Stick around. Hey folks, Keith here at Chicken Thigh Fishing. Welcome aboard and welcome to our new off the grid video series. You know, Chicken Thigh Fishing started with my first boat, a 1974 12 foot aluminum bought from the Sears and Roebuck catalog many, many years ago. I restored her a few years ago and she's a beaut. She's seen her days and I'll tell you what, she's seen a lot of fish. Well, we figured we would start heading out to some places on chicken thigh fishing where you just can't bring a bass boat. Car top only places and places that have really no access whatsoever and you have to go through the woods to get there. Sometimes it ain't easy, but most of the time it's worth it. So I'm happy that you could join us for the first installment of this series and we are heading to Moosehorn Pond in Hubbardston, Massachusetts. It's a honey hole and there's some hogs in there. So thanks for being with us, and let's go hog hunting. Now I actually haven't been to this pond in, oh, probably three or four years at least. Haven't been here since I got my bass boat, because I've been busy using my bass boat. But you know what? Sometimes you gotta slow things down a bit. And that's what we're gonna do today. in the saddle on the chicken thigh. We're gonna try a few different baits. I don't know. I'm gonna throw some crank baits, some spinner baits, some chatter baits, my usuals. But I think I'm also gonna run a nice slow glide bait around here this time of day. I really don't know what the depths are and I'm not running any electronics. So today we're going by feel. This is 
awesome. What a beautiful place. I'd forgotten how gorgeous a place this was. First fish. All right. All right. I was running a big crank. I ran a chatter and a spinner, and then I ran this big crank. And there's your first fish. All right. Got a little breeze and you know I was gonna forget something because I haven't done this in a while. I forgot my anchor. So I'm gonna have to play the breeze. All right, we got our first fish. All right, we're a little shallow for this deep crankbait but I want to throw a big profile bait. So I'm going to change over to a spinner bait that I can keep up in the water here. I've got no idea how deep this is and I can't see. This is not clear water, especially with all the torrential rain and hurricane remnants we've had. So my guess is we're going to bump into some things tonight. And I've been here four or five times in the past, years ago, so maybe it'll come back to me, the layout and stuff. But I've probably been on 200 bodies of water since then. Okay, so I've thrown a bunch of baits and I got one fish on the Gil Sonic and I just got another hit and I lost him when he jumped and spit me. So until the sun goes down, that's what I'm throwing because that's the only thing I've been hit on. That was a solid fish there, probably a three or a four came out of the water. fish here. Yeah? Well, I'll tell you what, he wasn't messing around hitting that. Hit that with a vengeance. Little guy. Well, maybe there's some fish out there because that's two in the same area. So let's hope I just ran into some. I think I found 
a transition here just based on what I'm feeling with my lure. Maybe we'll get them on an incline because I can feel where the elevation is. So I'm just going to move like 15 feet at a time. And if there is a ledge right there, they might be feeding on that ledge if there's bait fish in the area. Otherwise, those two were just a coincidence. All right, I'm hitting a grass bed about 30 feet in front of me. So I'm casting beyond that grass bed and bringing it up as slowly as I can without letting it sink too much. I got to keep a certain speed on this or it's going to sink down. Let it flutter through the water. I'm going to cast in and see what we got for depths in here. Oh, I don't know what we got for depth, but we got a fish. All right. All right, another one. They are loving the Magnum Gill Sonic. Well, one thing you don't have to be a professional angler for is something's working. You keep throwing it. They are just smoking this big crankbait. Okay, so definitely shallower in here and a little more challenging to keep this big lure in the right space on the uh, water column because it wants to sink down into the grass and I'm trying to keep it right up above the grass that I feel. Just going to change up for a minute and throw a hybrid hunter shallow crankbait where it shallows up here. All right. Now, I haven't been hit on any, anything in the uh, light color range here. So I'm going to change this out. I'm going to change the action and the color and the profile and throw a lipless, like a Rayburn Red. Let's see. Yep. Oh. Oh, crappy. So I've had quite a few inquiries about chicken thigh fishing. Where do you get the name chicken thigh fishing? Well, I suppose now is an appropriate time to share the story with you. So my brother Brian and I are in this very boat, which at the time is not named the chicken thigh. And we're on a pond that we've been on a hundred times and we know like the back of our hand. But it's the end of the year and they drew down the water. And just out of habit, I went on a path. I'm sitting here, and he's sitting there. And uh, I went on a path that I've taken on that pond a hundred times. Well, don't you know, I hit a big rock because the water was so low. Never even knew it was there. And just smashed this rock. Now, this is a 1974 Sears. Back in the 70s, the plug is on the floor. Nowadays, they're all in the transom, but the plug is on the floor. 
and I had one of those brass threaded plugs in it and it actually extended down below the hull of the boat probably by about I don't know three quarters of an inch well when I hit that rock I was on five I was in the fifth speed on my trolling motor and we hit the rock and we kept going and Brian's sitting in front of me and he looks down and he says boats filling up with water so I turned around and don't I see a water spout coming through there ain't no plug that rock tore the plug right out of my boat so we are filling up with water well we were hungry before we went fishing I had a bucket of KFC next to me and I was sitting here eating a chicken thigh when it happened and when I saw that water flying into the boat at a high rate of speed the only thing I could think of was to take that chicken thigh I was eating and stuff it in the hole and I stuffed it in there and twisted it in there wouldn't you know the chicken thigh held. We emptied the boat with a Gatorade bottle and we fished all night. That, my friends, is where you get chicken thigh. Pretty cool. Pretty sure I caught a six pounder that night. Well, folks, the bite is just not on tonight, and I'm not satisfied with that. I was out last night, and I was on a place where I really usually kill it, and I caught two fish in four hours. We just got down with a whole bunch of rain and a hurricane, and the water levels are way high, and the water is very turbid, so I'm thinking that's affecting the bite. So what we're going to do, we're going to come back here. We're going to wait a few days. See what happens with the weather. See what happens with the water. We're going to continue this because this place has got more to offer than that. I'll see you then. As a matter of fact, here I am. I am back. We're back on Moosehorn. It's about a week later. I wasn't satisfied with what we hit last time. We're going to hit something better this time. There we go. Yeah. All right. All right, first fish. It's basically a lure, but we like the first fish. Okay, okay. Bad fish. Not a bad little fish. Thank you. 